morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Two things before we get started this morning. Number one, get you some ginger, some ginger tea specifically in your life. So yesterday I felt, my throat felt a little compromised. So I have allergies and it's pollen and all those things. And I hadn't had ginger tea in a while. For me, a while is over a week. And, you know, I've been juicing. And I said, I, I'm going to get me some ginger tea. And I woke up this morning and, wow, it feels 95% uh, better. Maybe 100% better because what I'm feeling may just be my allergies at this point. So, number one, that's the first thing. Get you <laughs> some ginger in your life. We're talking about your money wounds, by, by the way, um, in this particular broadcast. But number two, before we get into money wounds and... You know, learning whether or not your self-worth, you are attaching your self-worth to your net worth. That's kind of what we're going to be talking about. But a number two announcement before we get into that is the Queen Behavior Master Life Session is going down today. 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time. And I'm just excited. Like, I feel... I don't know. I feel blessed to be able to do this work because everything is coming full circle, like everything. And so I'm excited for those of you who are, who have joined. And for those of you who say, you know what, today is my day. You can go to renewfullcircle.com slash queen B. That's the letter B, renewfullcircle.com slash queen B. That's the letter B. I have left the installment option open, um, so you pay one fee today, and I'm doing for this particular class a sisterhood honor system, so your next payment isn't due for three weeks, your next and final payment, so i love for you guys to um, just go a step deeper in your inner work and healing, and I'd love to support you on this aspect of your journey. We're going to be doing a deep dive on self-esteem. So money wounds. Is your self-worth, the way you're looking at your self-worth attached to your net worth? So I believe that when we came into this earth, into this world, when our moms birthed us, we had an empty slate. Like we didn't know all these inhibitions, um, we everything was pure for us at that state and life life experiences environments how we grew up as children the environment in the home the mindsets of our parents our teachers those people who have impacted us greatly um they begin to become mindsets and beliefs for us and so they may be facts, so it may be the actual situation that is occurring, but it doesn't make it the truth. It doesn't make it the fullness of the truth. And so we may have thoughts around money, um, how it's earned, how it should be earned, what to do with it, all of these things that we have adapted from our life situations, um, life occurrences that may have happened for, for us the way that our parents believed. And I want to talk about healing the money wounds. And, and so when we think about money wounds, let's think about the fact that God's intent in our creation was for us to live in peace, joy, love, abundance, you know, all of those great things. That's God's original intent, right? But depending on our family lineage, what we learned in our homes, the experiences we've had, some of the things that we're experiencing as it relates to prosperity and money, because this morning it's about money, right, um, have been impacted, right? And it may have changed how we feel about money, how we feel it should be earned, how our worthiness of even having it. And when I think about scripture, scripture says um, daily, you know, we should renew our minds. And I questioned God about that many years ago. And I said, well, what are we renewing our mind back to. And I believe it's that place, that pure place 
that we were originally given as it relates to peace, love, joy, prosperity, abundance, all those things. And our life circumstances can impact that and create what I'm going to call for this morning wounds. And specifically wounds around our money. Now, as I've done this work and studied this work for many years, the number one thing, hear me when I share this, guys, the number one wound um, that's attached to this whole money wound thing is low self-esteem. My gosh, low self-esteem. Here are a couple things that impact our esteem. So your self-esteem is how you value yourself. Now, if you just take a moment to think a little deeper than surface level, you'll realize that if you don't feel you deserve it, you won't go after it. You won't do it. You won't become it, right? And so that is directly connected to value and worth, self-esteem. So here's one thing, especially as it relates to women, because women are the demographic or the people that I am blessed to have the opportunity to work with the most. And I find that the father wound, hear me when I share this, guys, is a huge impact on our self-esteem, especially how it relates to money. So when we think about a father or male figure, automatically or normally, especially if you're a believer, according to scripture, we think provider. Y'all stay with me. We think provider. And based on how provision was, even in your childhood, as it relates to your father, it's easy to take those beliefs or those experiences into how we view money, into how we earn money, you know, for those of you who are business owners, into how you deliver services, you get receive, all of those things. And so if you had a father who was an excellent provider, you may be more on the lines of, I mean, of, of abundance as it relates to provision. But most especially in today's times, the father actually being in the home is not even one of the most popular scenarios. So it's likely that that father wound, that absence as it relates to, I did it again with those notifications. I'm going to do better. I am going to do better. Um, as it relates to how your father provided or maybe didn't provide, if your father had issues with trying to provide, those things could be connected to how you're doing life, your business, all of those things as it relates to money. So this impacts how what you feel you're worth. So maybe, and this is this is huge, it's heavy, but it's huge, it's heavy and huge. But oftentimes when there's absence from a parent, until a child comes of age or comes into a new level of awareness and understanding. Um, say, for instance, so I was married 14 years. I've been divorced now for over three years. And I believe that there was a stage with my daughter where she may have felt her father not being there. There was something she could do about it or she was a part of the problem or something of that nature. We've had those conversations to the point where she understands or it's been verbalized to her that that wasn't her fault. It didn't mean that he didn't care for her things of that nature. But oftentimes, if we've not healed that particular wound, we will still think that we weren't worthy of that parent being there. I hope this is making sense for you guys. And so it will impact our self-esteem. Um, the, the next thing that it impacts as it relates to, you know, our value and our worth is our ability to receive. our ability to receive. Now, this would look like a person who is um, overgiving, overcompensating. I did a video on yesterday, day before yesterday, where I talked about the rich queen and the poor queen. And one of the characteristics of the poor queen was she overgave. 
She overcompensated in many situations. And most people struggle, you know, when there is a money wound, it's because they struggle to receive. Even things like receiving joy. Receiving joy. So let's look at it like this. If earning more revenue, if uh, receiving more in your business or in your life would bring you a new level of joy, but every time you go to expand to that space, you kind of tower back down. You could be dealing with um, the lack of the ability to receive. And this kind of goes into, and I've talked about this briefly, I actually have a course called Her, where I really go into masculine and feminine energy. But I've talked about that giving, 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 being more of a masculine trait. Um, sometimes we do it to be accepted. We do it to be received. If we felt we weren't accepted, maybe it, even in our childhood, it can show up in our adult life. I believe that entrepreneurship, if you ever want to really understand who you are, start a business. I believe our, our soul goes through transformation as we are growing our business. When, even when we choose not to grow our business, even when we get to this space where we just kind of settling, it's not really what we want. It's not really happening the way we want it. I believe that entrepreneurship is a soul journey uh, fully and, and completely. But oftentimes there is an inability to receive. And so there's an overgiving, there's an overcompensation that happens. It can show up in your products and your, your services. So, you know, maybe you are undercharging one in your services because you, you want to be perceived as the person who is giving, but oftentimes that giving is coming from a depleted place. It's not coming from your overflow. And it's so attached to low self-esteem, um, self-worth, self-value. When you tap into a new realm of self-esteem, you begin to value yourself enough and understand that what you're giving is enough and you are deserving of receiving. You know, it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of ironic because at the same time that there is a need for more, or a desire for more, instead of positioning yourself to receive, positioning yourself to understand that you are valuable enough, you are worthy enough for the, the next level, you'll stay, right? You'll stay complacent in the space um, that, that you're in. So I believe that receiving goes to a new level as well, um, an inability to receive joy happiness, those things that will actually make you happen, happy. It could show up in a relationship where you're overgiving or you're overcompensating, but you're not receiving anything back. You're consistently placing yourself in circumstances and situations where you're just giving, 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 right? So it, there's this belief that I'm just going to work really hard, make more money, and then that's going to make me happy but it actually happens in the reverse. And a lot of our joy and happiness comes from us feeling valued. So when we feel valued and we feel worthy, there's a piece about that that shows up in every aspect that we go into. So um, what I'm finding as, as it relates to the money wounds is subconsciously, this is what will happen, right? When we struggle to receive, we create or align with circumstances that will prove to us this subconscious thought that we may not have been thinking about, that we're not worth the next level, that we're not valuable enough to sit in that room, um, that we're just not worthy. This is why I say a lot of money wounds are attached to your self-esteem, how you value yourself um, and the worth that you feel you have in your life subconsciously. Okay, like say you make a lot of money, right? If you subconsciously don't, if you have a wound around receiving, 
you will create circumstances and situations where you are not receiving. So maybe you get a lot of money in, but somehow or another you sabotage it and blow it on, you know, maybe the unnecessaries because somewhere down there, you don't feel worthy of receiving. This is why when I uh, announced the Queen Behavior Master Life session, I talked about the fact that we would deep dive into self-esteem because it hits so many aspects of our life that most often we're not aware of. We don't know that the reason that we're not going to the next level, the reason that we keep getting large sums of money and then it depletes or we keep finding ourselves back in the same situation we were in before that we don't desire is largely attached to our value and our worth, how we value ourselves and how we feel worthy. And those things are easily attached to childhood occurrences that we may have that we don't even recognize. It could be something that a teacher said to you, right? And you're still holding on to that. That thing may come up, that negative thought may come up every time you go to do something that's actually going to move you forward. I spoke with a client who had has already created, you know, a course two years ago, two years ago that has not gone forth with um, really putting the course out there and see what happens for us as entrepreneurs. If we are dealing with money wounds and we are struggling to receive, it shows up in, you know, what we are willing to offer publicly to the public, us actually being seen, you know, the, the fear around being seen or someone saying it's not working or whatever those things are. Um, receiving is often a huge uh, part of money wounds that keep us from going to the next level. So when I talked about when we're first born, how we come in the world pure. And circumstances and life situations, maybe the way our parents handled money or the way we saw money, the what, what we heard about money, um, the way money, money was used in our home, all of those things become what I call a programmed identity. And your self-esteem, the way you value yourself, the, whether you feel worthy or not, is a part of how you are identifying yourself. It's a programmed um, identity that occurs oftentimes from early as childhood. Those are what I consider wounds when they aren't um, a benefactor in you getting to the next level. So what happens is <clears throat> those wounds will show up because maybe you have an opportunity to do something different that's going to expand or enlarge the quality of your life, the abundance in your business, in your bank account, whatever the case may be, maybe you have that opportunity. Oftentimes when there is a money wound, there will be unconscious behaviors that happen every time you, you get ready to do something of that nature. Every time you get ready to evolve or expand, there'll be these unconscious behaviors that happen. It could be in the physical realm. So maybe every time there's a new opportunity to expand or grow, your money, your quality of life, things of that nature, maybe you start getting headaches or, um, you know, things of that nature. Listen, that's that would be the physical aspect of an unconscious behavior that you may have, which I would consider a, a wound as it relates to your money. Does that make sense? Some people, every time there's an opportunity to grow, these are things that we have to become conscious of, right? Um, something emotionally will, will happen or energetically will happen like to our energy. We'll start feeling depleted or those are things that we have to notice because oftentimes that's a money wound. That's an area where we are, are uncomfortable, right? And so um, the potential for you to earn more is being blocked by these unconscious behaviors that come up every time it's time for you to expand. As you come on, put me in the comments. If you just think briefly now, like every time it's time for me to expand. So maybe I'll do all the work, right? So maybe I'll create the course. You guys hear me?
That's the masculine side of it, right? I'll do all of that. But actually positioning myself so that I'm able to receive from that thing that I've created, positioning myself for that, that's when I become stuck. That's when these unconscious behaviors, you know, they may show up in, in your body. Something you might get a headache or, or all of a sudden you overly tired or just notice. Notice to see every time I got to do better with the notifications. I'll be forgetting y'all. I'm sorry. Every time there's a real opportunity to grow, you go something physically, you'll feel something physical going on or, you know, something emotionally. I want you to take notice of those things because those are what I consider money wounds. They're blocks for you getting to your next level. Again, your self-esteem is attached to you moving forward and you doing the things that are necessary necessary to do in your life because we can do a lot of busy stuff right so busy stuff may be creating a course but never you know promoting it never becoming one with the course where you're actually um sharing it with someone and putting yourself in a position to receive for the work that you've done it's a lot of you know masculine um energy going on there so I see it with entrepreneurs a lot. So they stay in the area of competence. So I'm real competent. This is my skill set and I can just do this thing with my eyes closed, but they never move into their zone of genius. And their zone of genius is a, a deeper expansion of who they are and what it is that they do, but it's done with um, more, more of a flow state as opposed to doing, doing, doing. I talk about in our um, exceptional mastermind, we're going to go into, you know, healing those money wounds and things of that nature. But I feel that the first basic foundation for healing some of the money wounds, because low self-esteem is a huge benefactor in it, is tapping into a new realm of self-esteem, which is how you value yourself and your worth. And so I wanted to come on and share that with you all to let you all know that one, the Queen Behavior Master Life session goes down this evening at 6 p.m. So you still have a small window of time to join us. But two, to let you know that the level that we're talking about self-esteem is going to break barriers in your life as it relates to your relationships, your money, your quality of life, because that self-esteem is like this foundational piece because it's how we value yourself and whether we feel we're worthy. For some of you, your skill set may be a skill set that someone who is an extremely high earner would be willing to come and receive. But because you don't feel worthy, you may not market to that particular person. I hope this is making sense. You may stay um, in a realm of this is all I feel I'm worth. So I'm only marketing to this particular sector. I'm going to undercharge uh, because I don't quite feel worthy for that next level. It's so many things. Hey, Shia, darling, that are attached to self-worth. Things that I didn't understand at one time, guys, right? Because I'm out there, you know, grinding and doing all of the things. And I, I even... So one, inner work and healing is a continuous journey, like as long as we're here on this earth. And I can remember um, knowing the value of what I offered, right? It's like, in my mind, I kind of knew it, but not in my heart. And there was, I feel like God was leading me to a different demographic of people to serve, but I didn't feel worthy of serving those people, right? Like, I felt like what I was sharing was above where I was um, marketing, if I could say that. I'm trying to find <clears throat> the, the appropriate words for it. And then once I began to work on my self-worth and my value, I realized that although my income was not in the millionaire status yet, there were people whose businesses were earning a million dollars who found my work valuable. 
I hope this is making sense to you all. And it takes doing that inner work and healing to even get to the place where you're not looking at, this is what we talked about in the very beginning, I asked the question, is your self-worth attached to your net worth? And what I mean by that is some of you are looking at how much you make and thinking that you don't qualify for the next level. You're attaching your net worth to your self-worth. Right. And it's keeping you from expanding and growing and, and doing all of the things. And so I remember being in that space and the the first person to share with me that their business was earning a million dollars and they needed my help. It was it was a huge blessing for me because it was something on the inside of me that was saying, man, this is powerful and this is powerful. But because my worth I had tapped into a new realm of what my work, the work that I was doing in the world was really worth. It would limit me from who I would, you know, market my services to. Um, it would also limit me to what prices I would um, offer my services for. So I knew that what I offered had the ability, one, to help people create six-figure businesses and, um, and beyond, but I just don't think I felt worthy. So I would just kind of stay in, you know, what was like this safe zone, right? This is subconsciously we create or align with circumstances that prove what we feel. We'll do all the things, right? But we won't necessarily posi position ourselves to receive at a different level. We feel that it has to be super hard or, but guys, you would be amazed at how valuable what you offer is and who is willing to offer it when you become the person, when you've tapped into a new level of self-esteem and, and self-worth and self-value. And listen, I just, I told you guys just a couple of years ago, I had to do more inner work in that area, in the area of value and self-worth. Um, in order to be able to serve, you know, that first person that came to me whose business was earning a million dollars. And then after that, it, it's like I started attracting more people whose business was earning a million dollars and mine wasn't earning a million dollars yet. So it, are you attaching your self-worth to your net worth? Are, are you looking at your bank account? Are you looking at your money? And you're saying, I'm not valuable enough to do that. I'm not worth that yet. Because worthiness, happiness, all of that stuff is, it happens on the inside first. Most people think if I work hard, um, if I make more money, then I'll be happy. But it's, it's in the reverse. You have to become wealth. You have to become happy. You have to become joy. You have to become valuable. You have to become worth to yourself prior to um, going to that next level. And, you know, inside my mastermind, I'm teaching uh, expanding your money containers. And I go into this on a whole nother round with the mastermind members about expanding that com container to receive. Because oftentimes what happens is if you have not properly found a solid foundation for value and self-worth, you'll receive a whole lot of money, right? You'll, you'll receive these spurts or where you get larger sums of money. And because subconsciously, right, um, you have money wounds about receiving or being worthy of having a certain thing, you will subconsciously create circumstances that will sabotage those large sums of money or um, those influxes of money. I hope this is making sense to you guys. And so I wanted to come on again and share that with you, talk about some money wounds, some of the things that uh, you're going to be able to break through inside the Queen Behavior Master Life session. We start today at 6 p.m. Eastern time and 5 Central time. There is still an installment option. I have a two-pay option. You pay today and then I'm doing the Sisterhood Honor System. And, and mainly because this is this work, all of the work that I do is super, super important. But for this, 
healing and inner work is huge and I want to allow as many people an opportunity as possible to come. But three weeks later, the second payment is due or you can save and do the one-time fee. But our, our value and our self-worth, it's attached to how we're doing business, how we're living our life, the quality of life we feel we're deserving of, the relationships we feel we're deserving of, you know, undercharging, all of it. It's like this worth thing that's oftentimes going on. I call them money wounds that we have because I believe that we came on this earth pure and we've been indoctrinated with a lot of thoughts and beliefs or we've adapted mindsets and beliefs, especially as it relates to money from our childhood. And they still show up in our adult life. Even as we earn more money, our ability to hold it or keep it may not be there because maybe maybe money was not consistent in the home as a child, right? I talked about the direct connection to the father wound for for us as it relates to, you know, money wounds that we can have because we look at the father <clears throat> as a provider, right? Most oftentimes when you think father, you think provider. And so your relationship with your father can be a direct, well, not direct, but a subconscious um, occurrence that's happening, you know, in your business. Was he a, a great provider? Um, did he have a healthy relationship with money? Because we all know that overgiving is not healthy, right? Um, was there, did your dad have an awful relationship with money? A lot of those things subconsciously impact um, how we're doing and being in the world. So that's my take on this money. Money wounds is your self-worth attached to your net worth. Um, we're going to dive deep on self-esteem and create creating boundaries inside the Queen Behavior Master Life session. We start this evening at 6 p.m. You still have a small window of time to join us. You can go to RenewFullCircle.com slash Queen B. RenewFullCircle.com slash Queen B.